Well, since Shake isn't being sold by Apple anymore, I thought I'd give you guys a wonderful option. And it's called Houdini. The jack of all trades, yes, compositing is one of its tricks it has under its hat. Um, so how do we composite inside of Houdini? Well, I'll show you. First off, go to your Composite View tab. If you don't have the Composite View tab, click the plus button, New Pane Tab Type, and select Composite View. This will give you a 2D composite view like in Shake or Fusion or Nuke. You will be in your object level. I want you to click here and go to your image level and you'll be at your compositing network view. You'll see a composite node. Double click that composite node to go to compositing level and now we're ready to composite. You won't have this pane. Yours will be set up like this. You won't have this one. Um, I'll explain what this is here for in a minute. You can ignore it for now. So the first thing we need to do is bring in some media to work with. So let's hit the tab key and type file. And we'll see our file node. And let's click and drop our file node in. We'll see our default pick was the butterfly that Houdini supplies. We want to change that to something of our own. So let's select this little button up here. And let's navigate to the picture we want. I'm going to select this green screen and we're going to key out some green here. Okay? So now you can see both of these panes have the same parameters, which is okay. Like I said, you can ignore this for now. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's, let's tab in a chroma key because that's the node we need to use to key out our hand is the chroma key node. So if you hit the tab key and start typing chroma, you'll see the chroma key node comes up. Let's select it and drop it right into place and click the little gray button on the bottom of our picture and connect it right into our chroma key and hit the visualize tab, the view tab for our chroma key. Now you can see whatever node we select or whichever node is highlighted is the node that the parameters are showing up in our pane. So what I'm going to do is select my chroma key, and I'm going to go up here and select this little pin tab, this little pin button, and that will pin these parameters to this pane. So no matter where I click, those chroma key parameters will always be visible, and that just helps me. You know, there's several ways to do that. This is just the way I do it. So now let's go ahead and key this out. We've got our chroma key uh, node selected. Let's take our little color wheel here and slide it around till we start getting a result. And there's a, a pretty decent result to start with, so let's open her up by grabbing the edges. Like so. Now we need to go down here and adjust our luminance and our luminance roll off. So let's up our luminance roll off just a tad. I don't want to up it too much. I don't want to eat out the hand too much. But this is just a fast way of showing you how to do this. Now let's back off our luminance a little bit here. I'm going to do it really slow. I don't want to have too much bleed in there. Uh, let's have a let's look at our hue roll off. Let's bring it in a little bit. And now you can see we're getting a pretty good key here. Not too bad. Okay, so now we need to bring something else in. Well, let me see here. Okay, that's not too bad. We've still got a little bit of green on there, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue for this video. Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. For now, I mean, for, for what this video is, I think you all get the point. Um, try not to be too much of a perfectionist here. So now we need something to composite with this. So let's bring in another file node. And that's going to bring in the exact same picture we had before. But we want to change it. Okay, so let's visualize it so we can see it. Let's select our button. And let's select something to composite it over top of. Okay, we'll select this one here. Let's bring it up so we can see what we're doing. And that's by hitting the space bar and right clicking. Okay, and middle click moves it, uh, pans it. Okay, now if you want to scale it up, make it a different resolution, just tab in a scale node like I'm doing here. And then you'll see inside the scale node, you can change to resolution and you can change it to a specific resolution like 1280 by 720, for instance. Okay, and if you're going to upscale your picture, I recommend using a scale node, okay? That way, if somebody sees your, your tree, they'll know that you've scaled up your image and they won't have to start digging in the nodes to see. So let me get rid of that scale node. Okay, so now we have our picture that we're going to use for the background and we have our keyed out hand. So we want to lay these over top of one another. Now there's several ways we can do this. Let's go ahead and tab, and under comps, you'll see almost every node you'll see in shake. Add, subtract, multiply, under, over, outside, average, blend. Um, now, the layer node's interesting because it will act 
as any node. As you see, global operations, you can change it to under, a top, inside, outside, screen, any of the comp nodes. But the problem with that is, if somebody gets a hold of your work and looks at it, they'll see a layer node and they won't know what operation you're using unless they click on it and go up here and look. So I recommend just not using that unless you're working on your own and it's not going to be an issue. We're going to just tab in a regular old over node. So let's tab and start typing over. And lay it in and there we go. So let's pop our hand in the first one, which will be on top. And our background in the back, which will be on the bottom. Hit the view flag. And there we go. Now we don't want to start scaling this hand down from within the overnode. Because again, like I say, if you give your work to somebody else, they won't know you've made any adjustments within this overnode, okay, under the scale position. And not unless they click on it and look. So what we're going to do is we're going to click our chroma key and we're going to tab in a transform node. That way when they look at your tree, just hold it over your link and click, it'll automatically connect. That way when they look at your tree, they'll see, oh, okay, he's got a transform node there. So this hand has been transformed in some way or another. Okay, so let's click our transform node and bring up our parameters and we can use the viewport if you want the adjustments in the viewport. Like so. We can make it a little bigger than that, I guess. Maybe that's a little too big. Okay, that don't look too bad right there. So now it looks like we've got our hand being held up in front of the camera, but we need to add a few more touches. We'll select our background pick, and let's tab in a blur. And we'll hold it over our link, connect it in, and let's up our blur to about 20, 30. Eh, 30's a little much. Let's back it off a little bit. Okay, I'm going to blur it to about... Let's try 10. Okay. Now our background pick is blurred out. Maybe 10 is a little much. Now our background pick is blurred out. And it looks like our camera is trying to focus in on our hand. Okay. Now there's several things you can do from within the Overnode if you want. There's a foreground weight, which will make the foreground transparent. As you can see, the hand there. And the background weight's the same thing. Okay. You can image wrap, which will... You can mirror your image if you like. It says like that there, and you can see you can get some good uses. You can see some good. You could see some good uses for this. Um, you just have to uh, use your imagination. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and append one more node. Let's append. Let's tab in. A lighting. Start typing L I G H T I N G and you'll see it. I'll plug it in there. Now, this node will let you adjust your lighting. Let's visualize it. Like the ambient, okay? Let me darken and lighten it. But what I'm going to do is if you grab your node and shake it, it disconnects it, which they got that from Shake, which is a great thing. I'm going to connect it just to the hand, okay? Just to the hand. That way, when I adjust my ambient, the hand is the only thing that's being affected, you see. Now it looks like we've got a light on our hand. You can see the specularity there on his hand, palm and stuff. Like somebody's shining a light on his hand. And if you wanted to tab in a lighting node on the background node, you could. And just darken it down or lighten it up. There's, I mean, this is a really, really powerful... Um, part of Houdini, I think, and um, it's just one more reason to learn it, um, if you ask me. Looks like to me we need to do a little adjusting on the uh, chroma key, and we can do that. You just have to finesse it and fool with it. I don't, I'm not particularly fond of how it's looking right there eh, that's looking a little better let's select our lighting node and let's adjust our lighting a little bit 
Okay, that looks a lot better there. Okay. Now I'm happy with that. Now I can't hardly see no outline or anything there. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. And I think this demonstrates really well the uh, wonderful, wonderful opportunities and options that Houdini gives you. Now also there's specular. You can change the color. And there's the diffuse. You can change the color of all these things and it's really just adjust to taste. Now as you can see we're getting kind of a blue glow on my hand here just by changing the colors. Okay. So that is how you key something within Houdini. I think it's a wonderful alternative to Shake because they have a free apprentice edition and they have a lot of the same nodes and if you're familiar with Shake in any way then I think you'll won't take you too long to get up to speed with Houdini compositing. Um, I, uh, I know it's not Shake. I understand this. I do. Um, it's hard to beat Shake and I still use Shake and I think Shake's going to be used for a long, long, long time. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Let me just get rid of our lighting nodes. I just wanted to demonstrate those for you. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, but as you can see, until a cheaper alternative than Nuke or Fusion shows up, Houdini is something that everybody should give a look at, okay? So thank you all for watching, and I look forward to future Shake, Houdini, Modo videos, and Final Cut Studio videos. Um, I'll be posting them on a regular basis if I can. Some old, some new. Um, I just hope you guys enjoy them. Thanks for watching.